Kia ora koukou. Here I am in my office today. Thought I'd read the story from here. Auntie Jo is in the library today, so I thought I won't go over there and read the story. I'll, I'll stay here. But I have got a book that I've chosen to read today, and it's called The Seven Kites of Matariki. And the author of the story is Calico McIntock. And the illustrator is Dominique Ford. The Seven Kites of Matariki. Long, long ago, in a valley full of laughing creeks and ancient trees, there lived seven little sisters. It was a special time of year. All through the village, preparations were being made to farewell the old year and greet the new. The sisters decided to celebrate the arrival of the new year by making kites, just as they had done the year before, and just as their mother and her sisters had done for years before that. But this year was going to be different. For the first time ever, the oldest or the youngest sister, Ururangi, was old enough to make her own kite. The eldest little sister made a green paper mulberry kite with eyes of tuatua shells. The second little sister made an orange reed kite with eyes of mussel shells. The third little sister made a pink manuka kite with eyes of scallop shells. The fourth little sister made a red feather kite with eyes of peppy shells. The fifth little sister made a blue fish skin kite with eyes of whelk shells. The sixth little sister made a white grass plumed kite with eyes of periwinkle shells. But Ururangi, the seventh and youngest little sister, made a many-coloured rainbow kite with eyes of power shells. That afternoon, the seven little sisters put on their thickest cloaks and tucked their newly made kites under their arms. Together they began the long walk out of the valley, across the creek and up the ridge to the top of the hill, where the warm wind and the east blew. The warm wind from the east blew. My kite will fly higher than your kite, boasted the first little sister. No, said the second little sister, my kite will fly higher than yours. Never, said the little sister, my kite will fly higher than both of them. No, the fourth little sister stamped her foot. I know, my kite will fly higher than yours. Never, said the fifth little sister, my kite is the best. It will fly higher than anybody's. No, shouted the sixth little sister, my kite will fly the highest. But Ururangi, the seventh and youngest little sister, said nothing. (laughs) 
When at last the seven little sisters reached the top of the hill, all was calm and quiet. No warm wind blew from the east. Tired and disappointed, the seven little sisters tied their kites to Grandfather Pudidi and huddled around his aged trunk to wait for wind. And as they waited, day turned into night until one by one, each little sister fell fast asleep. As the girls slept, a crescent moon came up over the hill and slipped between the leaves and the branches of Grandfather Pudidi. Its mystical light shone, shone into the wide awake seashell eyes of the seven kites, but the seven little sisters slept soundly on. Down came the early morning dew, moistening the air and bathing the wrinkled bark of Grandfather Pudidi. It also softened the skin of the seven kites, making their untested wings supple and prepared for flight. But still the seven little sisters slept soundly on. Then all of a sudden, up came the wind from the east, ready, willing and able to play. But no one was awake to see it. Wake up, wake up, blew the east wind as the leaves of Grandfather Pudere shook. Wake up, wake up, puffed the east wind as the branches of Grand Grandfather Pudere shook. Wake up, wake up, howled the east wind and the seven strings on the seven kites shook, became loose and the kites fluttered up into the morning sky. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven kites, carried by the warm wind from the east, the seven kites of the seven little sisters rose higher and higher. But the seven little sisters slept soundly on except Udurangi, the seventh and youngest little sister who began to dream. In her dream, Udurangi saw the crescent moon turn silver. She felt the warm wind from the east and heard the whispered invitation to play. She wondered why the seven kites with wide awake eyes wanted to escape. Suddenly, Ururangi awoke and wailed, My kite! It's gone! The other six sisters woke with a start, each one wailing, My kite! It's gone too! No, wait! The eldest sister pointed, Our kites are over there! The seven little sisters looked out into the morning sky, and there, low on the horizon, were six tiny kites. A green paper mulberry kite with eyes of tua tua shells, an orange reed kite with eyes of mussel shells, a pink manuka kite with eyes of scallop shells, a red feather kite with eyes of peepee -pee shells, a blue fish skin kite with eyes of whelk shells, and a white grass plumed kite with eyes of periwinkle shells. But where is my kite? Ururangi cried. Don't worry, said the second sister, our kites will not be lost. They will be seen as stars, marking the beginning of a new year. Our kites will be more beautiful than ever now.
Let's go, said the sit's little sister. I smell Kai. Yes, let's go home, said the other sisters as they hurried down the hill. But Urirangi lingered and was left behind. Wait, she exclaimed, look at that. And there, twinkling in the morning sky, were seven stars just like the missing kites, all gathered together dancing under the waning moon. Urirangi was happy. All by herself she had seen the first appearance of Matariki, the cluster of seven stars that, like the seven kites of the seven little sisters, lights up the morning sky at the dawn of the new year. Komotu Tamariki Ma, what a beautiful story. I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you have a lovely, lovely weekend. It's Friday and I'm going to go and do lots of um, fun things in the weekend. Hopefully the weather's nice and I can get outside. Kaki te whanau.